Hello friends, good morning. In my previous three lectures, I have explained three different methods for measurement of high AC as well as high DC voltage. The methods are potential divider, electrostatic voltmeter as well as sphere gap arrangement. Out of these three, the potential divider and sphere gap method are useful for impulse voltage measurement also. Also, the peak reading voltmeter can measure the peak value of the impulse voltage. Now here I will explain how the impulse voltage is measured and recorded. Basically recording is important. So let us take brief review of what is impulse wave. So this is impulse wave. Impulse wave is characterized by sharp rise in the amplitude and relatively slow decay. This rise and decay are in microseconds and this is one short voltage. Now, impulse voltage is defined by three parameters, peak value, T1 and T2. T1 is called as rise time or front time. It is the time required by the impulse wave to reach to the peak value. T2 is tail time or decay time. It is the time required by the impulse wave to reduce to 50% of the peak value. So, this is BP, T1 and T2. Now, this is one short voltage. So, on the measurement will not be sufficient because when we measure we can know how much was the peak value this we can know by the peak reading voltmeter also the sphere gap arrangement also potential divider also but we do not know we will not come to know whether it is as per standard or not we require the wave as per standard with certain tolerances for lightning impulse the standard as per Indian standard is 1.2 by 50 microsecond 1.2 should be rise time and 50 microsecond is decay time. If it is switching impulse, then rise time is 250 microseconds and tail time is 2500 microsecond. So, it is 250 by 2500 microsecond wave. Therefore, recording is necessary. Next thing is, if flash wave or spark wave or, or the breakdown of the test object takes place, then this impulse voltage is chalked down. Here I have shown the chalk impulse. Now, this is the impulse shown by dotted line. Here, the breakdown or flash over of the or the spark over of the test object has taken place at the rising portion. So when flash over or test of, of flash over or spark over takes place, the voltage collapses. Here, same thing has occurred at the peak value. So it has collapsed. Here it has taken place on the wave tail. It is collapsed. So in order to know the flash over point or spark over point or the breakdown point on the impulse wave or the test object, it is necessary to record. The impulse wave. So, first thing is if flash over or spark over or breakdown does not take place, we must know whether it is as whether the impulse wave is as per specification or not. Second thing is if flash over of the object has taken place, then we must know the point of flash over, whether it is on the wave front or the peak value or the wave tail. Therefore, recording of the impulse wave is necessary. So, that recording is done by potentiometer. By, poten sorry, by potential divider plus digital storage oscilloscope that I will explain now. Now this is the arrangement for impulse voltage measurement and recording. I have shown here resistance potential divider and for recording digital storage oscilloscope is there. We can use capacitance potential divider also. Now few things before explain how this recorded records the impulse voltage waveform. The high voltage transformer that is impulse generator, test object and this resistance potential divider, they all are subjected to high voltage. So, and this digital storage oscilloscope is used for measurement purpose and control panel for this impulse generator is also near to this digital storage oscilloscope. So, either this complete assembly that is impulse generator, test object and this potential divider. They will be in Faraday cage and the operating personal that is control panel, operating personal control panel and this DSO will be outside the Faraday cage. This normally happens in the institutional laboratory. But in test lab, operating personal, measuring arrangement that is digital storage oscilloscope and control panel, they are in the Faraday cage whereas this impulse generator divider and test object they are outside the Faraday cage. So, 
So in both the cases, the operating personnel, control panel, and DSO, they are far away from this high voltage test setup. So we have to use a delay cable to take the sample of the voltage from this potential divider up to the digital storage oscilloscope. This delay cable having impedance of Z serves two purposes. First is it slightly delays the arrival of this transient over voltage or transient voltage to the DSO so that DSO become ready for accepting this voltage and second it avoids electromagnetic interference which may cause distortion in the waveform. So to avoid electromagnetic interference and to provide delay the delay cable is used let us say Z is the impedance of this delay cable. R1, R2 they are the impedances of the resistance potential divider. We are selecting R1 and R2 in such a way that only few hundred volts or few volts appear across R2 whereas applied voltage is in thousands of kV. So maximum voltage drop will be across R1 that is V1 and a small sample will appear across V2. Now whenever, now let us see what is the importance or need of this matching the impedance, matching, matching impedance R3. Whenever there is transient voltage and it travels along a line and there is mismatch in the impedance. When there is mismatch in the impedance, part of this incident voltage wave is reflected and part of it is transmitted. So when, if we don't use this R3, we simply, we directly use this delay cable. Then what happens? When impulse voltage comes, that is transient phenomena, single short voltage having very high amplitude and short duration, comes at this point. Then there is change in impedance. So part of this will be transmitted and part of this will be reflected. So this DSO will record only the transmitted voltage. It will not record the actual voltage which was applied to the test object or the potential divider. So we have to match the impedance. We have to match the impedance in such a way that there is no mismatch of the impedance at this point. So that is called as impedance matching. So for no, mis for no mismatch, there should be continuity. It means impedance of this delay cable must be equal to impedance seen from this point of this complete assembly. So from this complete assembly, the impedance will be R3 in series with parallel combination of R1, R2. If we observe from this point, it is R3 and parallel combination of R1 and R2. Now if we don't use this impedance, the Z impedance is fixed, R1, R2 they are fixed. So we cannot match the impedances. So for matching, we have to compute the value of R3. So at this point, there should not be reflection, complete wave should be transmitted. So we have to match the impedance of Z with this assembly. So this assembly is R3 plus parallel combination of R1 and R2. Now as R1 is very very large than R2, we can take out here R1 only, R1, R1 will get cancelled. So Z will be equal to R3 plus R2. So R3 to be calculated will be equal to Z minus R2. So we calculate the value of R2. R3 that is impedance matching register we provide here and then whatever impulse voltage is coming a sample of that will be going to digital storage oscilloscope and digital storage oscilloscope will record this impulse waveform. So if there is any flashover, spark over or the breakdown of the test object this DSO will record that instant also and we can come to know what is the shape of the voltage wave if there is no breakdown and if there is flashover then we can move down the point of flashover that is on the chopped wave. So in this way, the impulse voltage is recorded. So that is all about the measurement and recording of the impulse voltage wave. Friends, if you feel this video lecture useful, then please like it, subscribe to my channel, ask your friends, colleagues and juniors to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system production. If you want to make effective and efficient use of time, then read my book on time management. The link for the book is given in the description box. I have learned a useful course for the students on Udemy. This course is very useful for the students who are preparing for entrance and competitive exams. The link for the course is also given in the description box. Thank you.